And we are live. Hi, this is Janice Sky Shy Travels with the Sky Shy Travel Guide Live. And I'm here with a special edition. We our guest for today is Greg Gross of I'm Black and I Travel. Welcome, Greg. Thank you, Janice. Happy to be with you today. Good to see you. Good to see you too, Greg. So congratulations on being nominated for National Geographic Traveler of the Year. Thank you very much. It really came as a surprise. Uh, the entire process has been something of a surprise to me. I still don't know even now who I nominated me or how I was nominated. Uh, this all just sort of popped up into my email box one day and nothing's been the same since. Wow, well that that's an amazing surprise for you. It just popped up in your email box. This is a huge honor. It really is. It's uh, very humbling, especially if I go back and I look at the nominees from 2012 and 2013 as well as the ones for this year, uh, some pretty high-powered company that they have tossed me in with. So yeah, it really is a great honor and it's very humbling. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. So tell everybody a little bit about um, I'm Black and I, and I Travel. How did you come up with the idea? Well, I'm Black and I Travel is a travel blog that I created in the main to encourage black Americans, African Americans to travel more. Uh, we Americans in general travel, especially internationally, less than just about anybody else in the Western world. We use less of our vacation time than just about anybody else in the Western world. And we have less vacation time than just about anybody else in the Western world. But all of that becomes even worse when you look specifically at our people, at black Americans. We tend to travel less than just about anybody. As a nation, as a whole, we have about maybe 37% of the population who actually hold a valid U.S. passport. And that is only as of 9-11 because of the security rules that went into effect after the 9-11 attacks that require you to have a passport or a passport card when you cross the border into Canada or into Mexico. Were it not for that, the actual numbers are probably be closer to somewhere between 15 and 20 percent. So as a nation in general we don't really see much of the world and black Americans in particular even less than that and it's something that concerns me a lot because the 21st century is much different than any era that we've seen in the past we are more globally interconnected, more globally interdependent, and more globally competitive than we've ever been before in human history. So as far as being successful, having chances, a real opportunity to advance your career, to elevate the quality of your life, the game has really gone global now. It's really international now. And you've got to be prepared for that, and you've got to uh, deal with the players who are out there. In my generation, as we were coming up, the com competition that we were looking at for jobs or opportunity to start careers or businesses and so on was coming mainly from our Euro-American counterparts coming from the suburbs and so on. That competition is still there, but it is now vastly expanded. You're now competing in addition with Johnny and Becky Suburbia, 
you're now also competing with the kid from Mumbai and the kid from Manila and the one from Singapore and the one from Rio and Sao Paulo, as well as the ones from London and Paris and Berlin and, and Tokyo and Beijing. The competition is now global, but your opportunities are also now global. And you've got to really prepare yourself to deal with all that. And one of the ways you do that is by traveling, learning more about the world, learning more about other people, about other cultures, and learning some languages so that you can communicate with other people in their own languages on their terms so that they're comfortable with you and you can be more comfortable with them. And so I wanted to create a blog that would sort of demystify travel, to take some of the mystery out of it, take some of, and take a lot of the fear out of it. Because whether people want to admit it or not, a lot of people really are afraid to travel. And there is an aspect of that that really relates just to us. And that is the fear factor. Um, being black in America, you experience a certain amount of negativity associated with our race. You experience a certain amount of prejudice, you experience a certain amount of racism, and we all know that we've all experienced that to one degree or another, and you know, I don't to take too much time on that because it's something everybody knows. But the unknown for a lot of people is, how am I going to be perceived? How am I going to be treated outside of this country? Am I going to run into the same kinds of things in Europe or in Asia or in Latin America or for that matter in Africa as I do here? You know, am I going to be treated differently, singled out because I am a black American? So there's a lot of fear around that. And so one of the things that I really try to do is to let people know that the conditions that you find in this country in terms of your perception as a black American, in terms of your treatment as a black American, is not something that you're necessarily going to run into in other parts of the world. In fact, you're much more likely to be perceived as an American first and a black person second if they think in terms of your ethnicity at all. Whereas here, it's pretty much the opposite. Uh, it always sort of amazes some of my non-black friends when I tell them this, but I feel more like an American when I'm outside of the United States than when I'm in it. Or as one of my readers said, you got to leave it to believe it. But at the same time, while, you know, while that's kind of disconcerting on one level, it does reassure people that they can travel to other parts of the world and not have to worry about that. They can leave that sort of social, cultural, political baggage at home and feel freer about being who they are and just seeing things and meeting people and just getting to know the world a little better. So I wanted to create the blog to sort of convey all of that. And I started publishing it in June of 2009, and I've been working at it ever since. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we, we definitely appreciate it. And, and um, so tell people about the contest that you're in, the National Geographic Traveler of the Year. Well, um, National Geographic, since 2012, has nominated 10 people, either individuals, couples, or families, as their travelers of the year. They're going now one step further and conducting an election for what they're calling the People's Choice Traveler of the Year. So that would be only one person or one entity winning that. And they are soliciting votes from across cyberspace. Anybody who reads the interviews and the profiles of the 10 nominees can vote for any of the 10 nominees on the National Geographic website. 
and basically... And how, what, what is the voting timeline? Uh, you can vote every day through October 25th. Um, you can vote once a day, but you can vote once a day on any device that has internet access that you have access to. And then at that point they will tally the votes and name the winner. I don't know that there is a prize or anything like that attached to this. Uh, simply having been named Traveler of the Year in a magazine published by an organization as prestigious as National Geographic would probably be award enough. Certainly it would be for me. Yes, it's quite an honor, quite an honor. And uh, people can go to the link that is below. Yes, they can. It's travel.nationalgeographic.com slash vote and then dash grid and there's another slash and then vote dash traveler dash of dash the dash year dash 2014. Okay, so everybody we invite you to um, vote for Greg, for Greg Gross, to be People's Choice National Geographic Traveler of the Year. Vote every day until October 25th, and let's get Greg um, elected. I would appreciate it very much. I'm grateful for every vote that I get, and even if... If you don't vote for me, I'm grateful that you take a look at the profile and hope that you'll come and visit the blog and get some benefit out of it. Um, I have readers currently in approximately 120 countries around the world, and so people are finding it useful. I don't just talk about destinations. I also talk about the mechanics of travel, how it works, things that you can do to make travel easier, on you, things that you find helpful. And so in that way I'm trying to encourage anyone who reads it to get out there and travel. Fantastic, fantastic. Well thank you so much Greg and we will be doing another hangout with Greg on Tuesday October 21st and it is at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, and 5 p.m. Pacific time. So join us and we will be hanging out with Greg for an hour and chatting. And you'll be able to submit questions via YouTube. So please join that hangout. And Greg, want to thank you for joining us and we are going to push you on over there. So we ask everybody to vote for you. Thank you very much, Janice, and congratulations on doing so well with this broadcast. This is all brand new technology to me, and you're already a master of it. This is really fantastic. <laughs> I enjoy having fun, so it's, it's a different way to have fun, so thank you. And uh, we will talk to you next Tuesday, Travel Tuesday, October 21st, and we will be voting daily for Greg. So, ciao. Bye-bye. Thank you. You're welcome.